some people read the Bible and go, man, the Bible is about like these great heroes. Yeah, they kind of failed, but they're heroes that we are to emulate. We are to be like Abraham. We are to be like Isaac. We are to be like Joseph and Moses and David and Esther and Jonah and Adam, right? The truth is the Bible is not about heroes. It's about one hero. A quick look and read through the scripture. You go, oh my gosh, all of these are monumental failures, right? Jesus is the one that all of these persons are pointing to. Abel was a righteous man who loved God and offered a sacrifice pleasing to him. Whereas Cain was unrighteous and he was jealous of Abel. He eventually killed the innocent Abel. You and I are a worse Cain and Jesus is the better Abel. It says that Abel's blood was crying out from the ground, crying out to God for condemnation over Cain for killing him. Jesus' blood cries out from the ground for our acquittal, for our acceptance, for our forgiveness. Jesus is the true and better Abel. God the Father sent Abraham into a far country to start a new people. God the Father sent Jesus into a farther country, into the world, to work in such a way to start a new people. Jesus is the true and better Abraham. God told Abraham to offer up his son as a sacrifice, Isaac, who was a boy, a young man. Isaac carries this wood on his back up to this hill, up to this mountain, and lays himself down on the altar. He lays down to be killed. But God stopped Abraham and said, in effect, Abraham, don't kill your son. There's a day coming when a better son will be offered up by a better father to establish a better covenant. Jesus carried the wood on his back to the place of the skull. Jesus carried his own cross to the place and God did not stop that. Jesus stood in our place and was sacrificed as Isaac was supposed to be. Jesus is the true and better Isaac. Joseph was abandoned by his brothers and thrown into the, a hole in the ground. Joseph then gets out of the hole and comes and gives a future to his brothers. Jesus was abandoned by his brothers and thrown in a tomb. Three days later, he got out of the tomb to give life to his brothers. Jesus is the true and better Joseph. Moses led the people of God out of slavery in Egypt into the promised land. Jesus is leading the people of God out of the true slavery to sin and Satan and death into the true promised land of heaven. Jesus is the true and better Moses. David defeated the giant Goliath with a few stones. Jesus defeated the true giants, Satan, sin, and death with a few nails. Jesus is the true and better David. Esther said she was going to the king and she said, If I perish, I perish to save my people. Jesus said, in effect, When I perish, I perish to save my people. Jesus is the true and better Esther. Jonah rebelled against God and spent three days in the belly of the whale, gets out of this belly or this fish, sorry, it's not a whale, gets out of the belly of the fish, goes and preaches repentance, and thousands of people are saved. Jesus spent three days in the belly of the earth in a tomb. He gets out, preaches repentance, and now 2,000 years later, billions of people have been saved. Jesus is the true and better Jonah. And finally, Adam. Our first father. Jesus came to make right what Adam did wrong. Adam disobeyed the father about the tree of life and brought death. Jesus obeyed the father about the tree of death and brought life. Adam doubted the father father in the garden of Eden. Jesus trusted the father in the garden of Gethsemane. Adam yielded to Satan. Jesus defeated Satan. Adam's sin brought thorns. Jesus wore a crown of thorns. Adam was naked and unashamed, and Jesus was stripped naked and bore our shame. Adam ushered sin in, and Jesus died to take sin out. Adam's sin brought condemnation. Jesus' life, death, and resurrection brought salvation. Adam's disobedience leads to death for all, and Jesus' obedience leads to life for all who trust him. Jesus is the true and better Adam. I say all of these things to you because so that you would you would have no doubt 
that Jesus is the Savior of the world. So that you would have no doubt that Jesus said what he meant. That Jesus meant what he said about why he was living, dying, and resurrecting. I want you to know that you can trust the Scripture. I want you to know that this has been the story the whole time. I want you to know that you're not the hero. I want you to know that Jesus is the hero. I want you to know that Jesus is the one that's been prophesied from the beginning, that's been foreshadowed from the beginning, that would come and succeed where we have all and will continually fail. 